Welcome to Meet the Artist on Auburn Community Television. Meet the Artist is supported by the North Auburn Artist to introduce artists in our local community. I'm Lucinda Laughlin, your host, and today our guest is Diane Wood. Diane does fabulous sculptures, as you can see from our display here in on the set. And today she's going to tell us about how she uses glass, metal, and wood to create these absolutely amazing pieces of art. Diane, thank you so much for joining us. Well, thank you for this opportunity. You know, one of the things I found fascinating in talking with you is your background and how you went from ceramics on into glass and the impact that actually had in your glass work. So if you could tell us a little bit about your movement, how, well, how you started in ceramics and then how you moved on to glass. Well, um, I started ceramics in college and uh, at that point I wasn't throwing bowls or anything else. I was actually sculpting wall pieces. Uh, in ceramics and learning how to do glazes and learning how to make transparency in in the clay body and that got me very interested in glass because glazes is nothing but glass. Mm -hmm. And then the, there are some similarities now in your glass work because you're using a kiln similar to the kilns that you're using with ceramics so that was also something that was in common with making that transition. Yes. Now, um, I also understand that you were some, you're self-taught, um, that this has been a process of experimentation and learning as you've been going the last 30 years. That's very true, because when I started in um, kelm form glass, uh, there was very little instruction. And so um, I basically took my knowledge of uh, firing kelms and clay and glazes and transported that into glass. Now, you've now moved into, you're also a teacher. That's correct. And where are you teaching? I teach at uh, Sierra Community College, and I teach for Placer uh, Education for Adults, or Adults Education. I can never keep that straight. <laughs> so, I would imagine this is kind of a scary area for somebody to just be starting out in. Um, and how do you go about getting people at ease so that they're comfortable in working with glass? Well, I believe uh, to make a class as fun as possible, and glass is very intimidating. So um, I just move the students through um, uh, how to do it, and basically um, tell them that they are going to make more than one piece, and that from each piece you will learn how to blend glass, and I will be doing the fusing. So this is really a hands-on experience for them and not just a lecture. Oh yes, it's very hands-on. Now, um, do the, like at Sierra, they have, I'm sure, all kinds of different sizes of kilns and, that you're using, or is it just, is this just a set type of kiln that is used for glass work? Uh, glass is its own kiln, and uh, I discourage as much as I can not to use a ceramic kiln because of the dust within the kiln. And now, because that would what make the glass dirty, or what? Yes, it? it will. It eventually, uh, the talcum in the uh, all the um, bricks are going to come out, and they're just going to drop onto the glass, and you will see it eventually. You might get away with it a couple of times, but eventually, you're going to get caught. Now there is a difference, though, in the heating process in the kiln from going from the ceramics to the glass work uh, in terms of the temperatures. Yes. Uh, a glass firing, I mean, yes, a glass firing is a soak hold. So you bring it through series of uh, temperatures and you hold it until you achieve what you want. In other words, all the glass is at that temperature you want. With ceramics, it is uh, basically you dry out the clay and then you just turn on the power and you just keep going up until it's over. Now, the, one of the things that when we were talking about this, we talked about how you would start the process and that you do some pretty significant sketches and everything of your work before you then move on into doing your actual um, the glass work or any of the, even the metal work. Yes, I do a series of at least three uh, drawings for each piece that you see in front of you. And I do an experimental firing if the piece is very difficult. Uh, and I'll do that all in clear. And uh, make any corrections that I need to make on the last uh, drawing. And then I go from there. Mm -hmm. And so this is 
a very engineered process. I, it looks like it from the point that you have to have these, you use these very detailed drawings, planning this all out, and then executing upon those. You only get one, one shot with uh, fused glass. So you have to figure out how the glass is going to drop, mm -hmm. how the glass is going to allow air to escape and not form a big bubble under your design. So there is um, a lot of engineering and understanding what the glass is going to do as it becomes liquid. So that part you really do have to figure out. I imagine that over time you learn more and more about glass and working with glass with each piece that you do. Yes, I, I tend to not like to do the same thing over and over, like the bowl, over and over. I like to do different things. So I am constantly learning, and uh, that's what I like about class, because uh, you just have to keep pushing the envelope. I think you like the challenge. Definitely. <laughs> so let's, you have brought some absolutely fabulous pieces, and so let's start talking first about your glass work. And the first one is Genesis. Okay. And so, and this is this, this plate here. Right. And tell me a little bit about it because I understand this is a full fuse. Yes, that is a full fuse. And could you, that is a, a, to be distinguished from what? A, a textured fuse. fuse. And what is the difference between a textured fuse and a full fuse? A full fuse is glass is all the way down and embedded completely. And a textured fuse, you are bringing the glass down, but you're holding it so it's more raised up. Now, in that process of the fuse, is that something you do prior to going in the kiln? Is it something that happens in the kiln? I'm sorry, it ha you're, you've got somebody here who absolutely knows, has no understanding of glass. Okay. Um, that happens in the kiln. Okay. Actually, the beginning is the layout of the glass. Okay. That is crucial and uh, then everything else is done in the kiln. And, but that you dictate which, if, whether it's going to be a full fuse or this, uh, what's a textured fuse? Textured fuse, yes. And you, you make that determination before it goes in the kiln? Yes, for my drawings. I okay. make a decision on my drawings what I want the piece to finally look like. I see, okay. So that's yeah, just for me is to get these steps together. Yeah. Um, now the, also, does this use any, because I understand you use a lot of recycled materials. Are there recycled materials in this particular piece? No, no, there is no recycle okay, there. Okay, so but when we get to some, if you have some recycled materials. Yes, I'm getting interested in recycling glass. Yes, and uh, you were telling me about as um, bottles? Yes, I, so, um, I was uh, requested to teach a bottle class and I just went, oh my God, and <laughs> I did it. And then I found other ways to work with uh, wine bottles. So, like right now I am making a, uh, a wine bottle wall in my, one of my um, clay working areas outside. So the whole little building is going to be encased in bottles hanging down. And then you'll be giving, you're going to be doing a class in this. You've actually agreed now to do a class in working with these bottles. Uh, not that. I am okay. just going to do the, the that one's <laughs> oh, a little difficult. <laughs> well, you could. I could teach you. But um, normally I just do the normal bottle class uh, that's out there. We uh, slump the bottles. We, we uh, learn how to drill holes in bottles. We learn how to light them. Uh, it is more of a um, kind of a craft class. That's how I would view it. But I am taking the bottles into art format, format more. Well, I'm going to be excited to see what you're doing with the bottles. OK. Uh, so let's talk a little bit about back at the Genesis, too, because um, you have the lines that come through it. Uh, you have the parts that come up and curve. How do you go about getting that, and how does, just take me through the process of, of that. Well, Genesis is one of probably the most difficult um, pieces to do, because there are uh, five layers of glass, and at the same time it's not extremely heavy, because mm -hmm. I'm using thin and standard glass. The lines through it is uh, called stringers, which is very thin pieces of glass pulled out, and I use that as a part of the design. So now you start out with a sheet of glass? 
Yes. And for Genesis, was it a, a clear piece of glass? Yes, you start, you start out with a base. Mm -hmm. So the base of the Genesis is clear. And then the trick of the Genesis is that if you look at it, you will see that there is a lot of, of um, curve cuts. And all those cuts have to come down and meet each other and blend in without having gaps in between them. That is what's difficult with that piece. Now, I also the color, you have colors in there too. Right. Uh, now, is that putting a different color of glass on the clear glass that you started? Yes, yes. There's several different colors, and there's iridize, and then there's iridize with patterns on that glass too. Now, do they, when you have them in the kiln, do they heat at the same temperature when you're using like an opaque versus a, tra a transparent? Or cause no, that's uh, one of the. Um, uh, things about glass. Mm -hmm. Transparency takes longer to go through the kiln because the heat is going through it. Where if it's opaque, the glass is absorbing more of the heat. So um, different glass fires different ways. And when you incorporate diff opaques and transparency, uh, you just have to use a more difficult uh, kiln schedule. So this is also another area where this is demonstrating a very complex piece because of the use of the different glasses that yes. go through the different, different temperatures. That's true. It is, well, it's a beautiful piece. I love that we've put the light behind it so we can actually see the beautiful colors in it. Yes. All right, the next is Baby Crane, which is another um, glasswork for you. And this one, again, this is, um, again, starts with a sheet of glass. Right. And then why don't you tell me this process, because it is a different type of process. It's still using, is, is this a full fuse in this one, or is it? This is a kind of a semi-fuse and texture, which is uh, something that I have developed for myself. So in that piece, the bird is totally done with fritz and stringer to uh, give the opinion of down feathers of a young bird. Now explain fritz and stringer. What exactly is that? Well, stringer is the long piece of glass pulled out, like I used in the Genesis. Mm -hmm. The frit is very, very fine glass uh, that is manufactured and uh, broken down to it has uh, almost like above an enamel uh, grain. So now when you're creating the baby crane, do you start out with your sheet of glass? Um, do you and is it shaped at that point in time? Yes. And then do you start laying on top of that the various glass that you're going to be yes. creating? Yes. Then you stuff? start your, your layers of your glass. Mm -hmm. And that's all done before it goes into the kiln? Yes, it has to. Um, now, because again, there are various colors in this, it's, it's, does this one have a problem too about really having to watch it in terms of the temperature that's necessary? Or was this one not quite as complex as what we're seeing back here because you have the transparent with the definite color. Uh, the uh, crane has the difficulty of not losing the frit. Uh -huh. The frit, if you look at the crane, it actually is raised. Mm -hmm. So the frit is showing texture, but at the same time I have not uh, fused it all the way down or I would have lost it. And the stringer is in there and I have not lost the shape of making the feathers of the bird with the stringer. So it is, I mean, this very complex. complex. Not, not, I was not trying to minimize what was No, 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 it's just... Of this take. Now, when you're talking about the, um, the method of the, the frit, mm -hmm. so you've basically put multiple layers on it. Now, when you're talking about not losing that layering, that's done through your temperature process? Yes, time, time and temperature. Now, how do you know? I mean, do you have a window on your kiln? So you're in there watching it? Or? Well, first of all, I advise anyone looking into a kiln to wear <laughs> safety glasses. I wear uh, my old ceramic uh, uh, firing glasses. Uh, and I, at a certain time, I can open my peephole uh, in oh, the kiln. There's, there's a peephole, hole, yeah. And then you, you're wearing the glasses and you uh, slowly adjust your eyes to how much heat you're seeing and light. And if you give your eyes a few minutes with the glasses on, you can see the image and what the glass is doing. I don't open a lid because I lose a lot of power. So I use the peepholes. Now when you do a piece like Baby Crane, is 
Are you just doing this piece then in the kiln? Yes, because otherwise I would have failure on one of the pieces. Now I'm going to move us back just a little bit because we did kind of touch on it, and that's the safety aspects of this. Because this, to me, sounds like a very dangerous process. Uh, and you're talking about the safety glasses, but you're also handling hot glass. Um, I'm trying. To, I'm envisioning you putting on like almost a space suit so that you're, you know, handling all of this. Um, do you have a specific apron? I have an old fireman's uh, jacket that someone gave me. It's pretty ratty looking, but it protects me. I have a dichroic gold shield that I use. And when I'm doing, when what you're talking about, I'm raking glass. So I am in uh, the kiln with um, another person who will open the lid and we're doing counts and I'm in this suit and I am coming in with a stainless steel rod and I manipulate the glass very quickly so it will flow. That's when I'm when I'm really. I guess that's dangerous. I don't teach that. No, I was, that does sound dangerous. No, I don't teach down. that. So the lid is open on this thing, and you're now down. In down with all my all my equipment on with stainless steel rods, uh, manipulating. I do yes. manipulate glass in the kiln too, along with raking the glass. Oh yeah, I think you would definitely have to have a lot of experience to get to that point. Yes. Yes, very so what much. Is that warning they said, do not do this at home. Yes, I always say, I do this, but you do not. Uh, I would see why. I can see why. Now, another piece that you brought today is one that we had not previously spoken about, and that is the union. Yes. And I, this is a newer piece of yours. Yes. Okay. Could you pick it up because this is one that uh, normally is a wall painting, but unfortunately, I don't have the wall space for it today. Okay. Um, so Diane's going to hold it and. Talk to us about this particular piece and the process that you went through. Um, well, this has um, two layers of glass, which is uh, slumped, which means I have bent this glass backwards and, uh, f and uh, made a form. I do make all my own ceramic forms, and that's where my ceramic background comes in really nicely. Uh, this is called a cold attachment. So it's uh, spaced uh, forward. You can, I hope you can see the dimension in it. There is also a copper uh, two figures within it. And there's a side view of it so you can see where it is um, standing away from each other. And then it just goes up on the wall on a hook. And, and it does have uh, cold attachment. So it's a full fuse cold attachment and uh, the uh, copper within it. Now, cold attachment, is that what you would refer to? Yes. What is that? That is anything that is not um, uh, fused within it. Mm -hmm. Because it's impossible. <laughs> so how does that process work within what we've just been talking about when you're working with this glass? So far, this is the first one we've talked about which has cold attachments. Okay. And it, so is it a press, so you do the glass and do you put that on top of it or just ex explain how that process I Well, I make separate pieces okay. for the glass because if I, if you notice it's, it's raised, uh, so um, I have to add the final um, dimensia to it in a, what is called a cold attachment because if I put it in the kiln and try the same thing, I will fuse down more and I won't get the effect I wanted. Now it's, it is interesting how this is, is bent and is this a process that's done while it's heated then is to get this? Yes, I first have to make the piece mm -hmm. and then I have to bend the piece. So I commit um, two times through, well actually I commit three times in kiln. And um, and uh, and finish the piece. That is absolutely beautiful. I love seeing these two that can be hung on the wall as well. Yes. Uh, because I think that a lot of us don't have the space to you know have the sculptures. Uh, we have a lot more wall space. It seems like. Yes, I was advised by a professor get it on the wall. Get it on the wall. <laughs> Um, let's see, now let's go to the woman in Roots. Yes. And that is actually behind us. And um, since I'm going to ask you to kind of go by memory so you're not looking back at it. Okay. Uh, we don't, we yes. Your face for the okay. 
Um, so let's talk about this because this is using glass, bronze, and wood. Is there wood in this one? No, there is no wood in this. This is just uh, a bronze. It has a wood look to it, I guess, is what I'm seeing. But that just is... Well, that's the bronze work. Uh, the uh, figure is um, from Ireland that there is a goddess in the trees and it's called the woman in the roots. Uh, so the bronze is kind of giving you that opinion that it has a wood look. I did try to make it look twisty and, and uh, have movement as the wood in roots of a tree. Well, you're obviously successful because that's what I see in that is that wood and that texture that you get. Now, I understand you did all of your bronze work. Yes. And let's go through this process because uh, you actually went through this a couple of times with me so I could understand it. Okay. So let's do go through it because this is a really complicated process. Uh, and so let's start at the starting point for particularly this piece and doing the bronze work. Well, the first thing you do to uh, work with bronze is that you have to make a uh, wax uh, model. So I first made the wax piece of the woman in roots. Then I encased it in a um, kiln uh, mixture. Then that is fired in a kiln and burning off the wax, which takes quite a while. Then while it is ready to go and it's burnt out, then uh, you come over with help of somebody because it's bronze is heavy and we do a pour right into the mold as it's still warm and the wax is burnt out. Now, you, I think is it the word investment? Is that a word? That yes, the, and it, it gets invested in the, uh, in the body, the uh, um, it's like a silicone and clay mixture. Now, when you talk about working with the wax, this is actually where you do like the carving within the wax. Right. All of that detail that we're seeing on. That's true. Yes, you do. And so this is quite a process in and of itself is to be working within this wax. Yes, it is. Okay, so if you've done this in the wax, is it done in the reverse or is it? No, it's just uh, it's the wax piece looks just like what you're seeing, the bronze. Oh, okay, okay, so it's like this. And then this another item, this investment, investment. comes over this. You actually pour the investment over the wax. Over the wax, okay. And then you have to put also what's called gates into your work, which is other tubes of wax. So when you do the pour, all the bronze goes into it quickly so you don't get an incomplete uh, work. And this is what it just was like, this is, again, so complicated because when you finally get to that step where you're going to be pouring that bronze in, um, now, the wax doesn't always stay there, though, because you've now... The wax is burnt out burnt before out. you pour the uh, bronze. Okay, so we've done the wax, we've done this... Investment. And then does that go in? Into a kiln. Okay. And then the wax is melted out. Yeah, it evaporates. And so then what happens is that this investment is basically a, almost a negative image? What right. It? And then you bring it out. And you you already have your um, bronze all ready to its point of uh, pouring, mm -hmm. and you uh, pick it up, and you uh, not physically, but you pick it up with tools, and you pour. Uh -huh. it takes two people to do a casting. And the pouring it in. Pouring it in. And this is, and then at that point, what happens? The, uh, it just pours in, fills all the cavities. You hope for the best. That <laughs> you have not missed anything and your gates are working. And then when it cools down a bit, you break the investment and either you're very happy or you're upset. <laughs> That's oh the only gosh. way because it's, it's now or never. You either did it or you didn't do it. Um, and if you didn't, you just said. Well, the best thing about it is to recycle the bronze again, make your wax again, and go again, and see where you've made the mistake with the gates. Yes, but you have to do all that recarving again. Yes. In the wax. Yes, luckily I did not have to do that. Oh, okay. <laughs> this could either be an absolute glorious moment or the absolute frustration. Yes, I have seen people just go, ah! <laughs> Well, I'm impressed that you do your own bronze work. That is absolutely amazing. So then um, this is attached to it is the glass work that you've done. And I love it because we have the light behind it. It shows these multiple colors that you have in this glass piece that comes up. Um, and what 
exactly are, is the process that you used in, in this part of the sculpture? You mean in the bend around yes. it? Mm -hmm. That is a mold that I made again, uh, custom for it. And that this mold here was a little difficult because it is the angle of the uh, glass coming down. So it's done in a series of very slow drops in the kiln until you have the piece of glass encasing the mold. Well, it's a beautiful piece. Uh, well, thank I you. It too. I love the bronze work with the glass. Well, thank you. Uh, the next we're going to go to is Dreamer. Okay. And this piece is one that I really love as well and it does demonstrate a layering process that you do with the glass uh, that I find is I'm just fascinated with and I'm going to put it on the side so you can just see the multiple layers uh, that we have through here. Uh, what is the process that you've used in creating Dreamer? Well um Number one is the uh, fused work. Now that is a combination of uh, textured fire and, fuel and full fire. Uh, there's also copper interlaid under the mask and uh, then it is mounted on the uh, copper and stainless steel. Now did you do this layering before it goes in the kiln? Yes. Oh, I forgot to mention it's also glass paint, enamel, to make the, uh, the image of the eyes and the birds flying up on the forehead. So there's, there's fused glass, there's enamel paint, there is copper wiring fused in, and the uh, texture, and then the background metal. And this is another one that can be hung on the wall. Right yes, now, that so. is a, a wall mount. Yes, absolutely another beautiful piece. Uh, and we have Buddha. Yes. And let's, because I do want to get to also a connection, so we're going to have to go pretty quickly. Okay. Uh, so talk to me a little bit about Buddha and the process that you had in creating this particular piece. Okay, this is really uh, one I call the awakening. There is a cast piece of the Buddha's head mounted onto the metal work that I did. Uh, the idea of the metal is a leaf and the Buddha is uh, um, basically that is a cold attachment is a cold attachment onto the metal. I love it and the sculpting that you have within this uh, is it's like almost a mask type of is this done again would they, wouldn't the glass have to be heated in order to do Oh this? yes this is uh, I made the mold so once the mold is made then I have to, I have layered um, frit over and over mm -hmm. until I can cast the complete piece. And I have to measure the depth uh, and everything and how much glass it's going to take. So actually to get that one, it took me, I think I did two firings till I was satisfied mm -hmm. that I got the detail of the image. Well, it is absolutely fabulous. I love how subtle it is. And again, it's a, hopefully the light is picking it up so you can really see uh, the nose and the eyes in it. It's beautiful. Um, and the final piece I do want to talk about is the connection. And the part of the reason I love this is because one of the things you said is that it's, it's about a connection uh, between human beings is what you're trying to depict in this particular piece. And I love the blue color. So tell me about the process in the glass behind it and then the metal work that you've done. Well, the metal work just about did my hands in. I had a jig and I just kept making spirals over and over and over. And then I welded the spirals together into the circle, circle shape. And the spirals have different depths in them, so again, to cause um, interest. And the back piece of the glass is um, a uh, two layers of sheet glass and then I did large frit mm -hmm. and in again the spiral. So it's just basically a piece that we are all connected and not just human beings but we are connected to the physical world too. So I don't know if you can see the fish in it but that is representing the animal, that animal life and that we all share a connection together. Well, I love that piece again. Well, guess what? We have run out of time. Um, okay. So if you could very quickly tell our audience how to get in contact with you because I am sure they would love to see more of your sculpting work but also your jewelry line uh, because I think they need to come to your place and see that. So please give me All right. Uh, my website is Diane Wood. Uh, um, 
my email is uh, www.kelmglassdwood at gmail.com. I am so thankful that Diane could join us today, and I'm thankful that you are turning in to us to see our show. I, this one is, have, time went by very, very fast because she has so many interesting pieces. Certainly hope that you will join us again on Meet the Artist on Auburn Community Television, and maybe you have an uh, artist living right next door.